What is information? Information is what you get when your uncertainty about something is reduced. If your uncertainty is decreased, then your information is increased. You receive information. Now, what exactly does that mean? Here's a really simple example. When you flip a fair coin, you're uncertain of whether it will land on heads or tails. You have uncertainty about that. But when it lands, you can see what side it landed on, so your uncertainty is gone. And that loss of uncertainty equates to a gain in information. The side that the coin landed on, that is information. Now, suppose we had a coin that always lands on heads and never lands on tails. It's a broken coin. When you flip this coin, you have no uncertainty because it's going to land on heads. You already know that. So when it lands on heads, you aren't getting any information out of it. You're not getting any information because your uncertainty hasn't been reduced. And your uncertainty hasn't been reduced because you had no uncertainty to begin with, because the coin always lands on heads. And we can actually calculate the amount of uncertainty we have about an information source. And by calculating the amount of uncertainty, we're also calculating the amount of information that we'll receive when we lose that uncertainty. Now, an information source is just something like flipping a coin, something that is a source of information. We can use the letter X to refer to an information source. Now, how many possible outcomes does X have? Well, that depends on what X is. If X is a fair coin that can land on heads or tails, it has two possible outcomes. We'll use the letter M for the number of possible outcomes. The amount of information that we'll receive from X, we'll call that the I of X. Here's the equation for calculating I of X. The information I received from information source X equals the logarithm of the number of possible outcomes, M. I of X equals log M. Now, the unit that we're using to measure I of X, that depends on the base of the logarithm of M. For this, we're going to measure I of X in bits. A bit is a binary digit, meaning it has two possible states. So the base of the logarithm will be two. And since M represents two possible outcomes, I of X equals log base two of two. Log base two of two equals one. So the information we receive from information source X equals one, and that's one bit. So when we flip a fair coin with two possible outcomes, we have one bit of uncertainty. And when it lands, we lose that uncertainty and gain one bit of information. Now, what about the broken coin? We can calculate the information we receive from that, too. Since it only lands on heads, it only has one possible outcome, so M is one. I of X equals log base two of one, which equals zero bits. So with the broken coin as the information source, our uncertainty is zero bits when we flip it, and when it lands, we get zero bits of information. No information, because it always lands on heads. How about using a die as our information source? It has six possible outcomes, so I of X equals log base two of six, which equals about 2.585 you get approximately 2.585 bits of information from rolling a die. Now, this equation relies on the assumption that all of the possible outcomes of the information source are equally likely. They all have an equal probability. So heads is just as likely as tails on a fair coin, and one through six are all equally likely on a die. But what if all of the possibilities aren't equally likely? What if they have different probabilities? How would we calculate the information we can get from an information source whose outcomes have unequal probabilities? Well, let's say that all the possible outcomes of an information source are in a set. We'll call these outcomes A1, A2, and so on, ranging all the way to AM, which is the last one because M is the number of possible outcomes. We can refer to these outcomes as symbols. For example, a fair coin has two symbols, heads and tails. So in the set of symbols for a fair coin, these are represented as A1 and A2. Now there's also a set of probabilities associated with these symbols. Each symbol has a probability. We can represent this as the probability P of the symbol I. Now, I is just meant to stand in for any symbol. So the probability of the first symbol is P1. 
So if symbol 1 is heads, then for a fair coin, P1 is 0.5. And if symbol 2 is tails, then P2 is also 0.5. Remember, probabilities have to add up to 1. So these probabilities form a set of P1, P2, and so on, all the way to Pm. But for a fair coin, all we have are two symbols, so all we have are P1 and P2. And we can actually calculate how much information we receive when we get a specific symbol from an information source. The equation for this is the information i that we receive when we get a specific symbol i is equal to the logarithm of 1 over the probability of symbol i. So for symbol 1, i of symbol 1 equals log of 1 over the probability of symbol 1. So if symbol 1 is heads, then the probability of symbol 1 is 0.5. And since we're measuring information in bits, the base of the logarithm is 2. Here's what this comes out to. The information we receive when we get symbol 1, heads, is 1 bit. And we can use the same equation to see how much information we get from the broken coin that always comes up as heads. There's only one outcome, or symbol, and the probability of that symbol is 1. Log base 2 of 1 over 1 is 0. We receive 0 bits of information from the broken coin. Now, what if we have a strange coin? 75% of the time, it lands on heads, and 25% of the time, it lands on tails. It has two symbols, and the probabilities are 0.75 and 0.25. So how much information do we get when we flip the coin and it comes up as heads? Log base 2 of 1 over 0.75 comes out to about 0.415 bits of information. Now, how much information do we get when the coin comes up as tails? Log base 2 of 1 over 0.25 comes out to 2 bits of information. You can see that the outcomes that are less common give us more information, and the outcomes that are more common give us less information. The measure of information that we get from a specific outcome is known as self-information, and it's sometimes called surprisal because it's a measure of how surprising a specific outcome is. For a fair coin, where heads and tails are equally probable, it's equally surprising when we get heads or tails. So both heads and tails give us one bit of information. But say we had a coin where it turns up as heads 99% of the time, and tails 1% of the time. Log base 2 of 1 over 0.99 is about 0.014 bits of information. It's not very surprising when this coin comes up as heads, so we're not getting much information. But for tails, log base 2 of 1 over 0.01 comes out to about 6.644 bits. It is more surprising when the coin comes up as tails, and we get more information out of it.